Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Hello, Joel. How are you going? I'm good, thanks. I'll just That's ring. Cool. Hopefully cool. I've done this transition right. No, I haven't brought you up yet. Oh, there we are. How are you? Good, yourself? How have you been? Yeah, yeah, I've been good. It's exciting doing this uh, this new show uh, live uh, three nights a week. So yeah, the, the main thing... So I, my days are now organized now because I don't have to reserve time for, for editing or, or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, during the day I, I do my written journalism, then later in the day plan, plan for the evening. And so, yeah, I'm getting into a routine, which is nice. That's great. That's ah, really good. I good fixed the, the, the screen now. So uh, people can see this, this nice split screen <laughs> that we've got. I'm here in the studio and then in that circle is is joel <laughs> awesome hmm. so i've got you on tonight because you're a new south uh, welshman and mm. there's been a, a another political crisis uh, there now you're i described you as a, a young conservative is that fair to, fair to yeah, describe absolutely. you as because oh, I called Sam, I think I called Samrat on the Uncuckables last week a social conservative. He didn't like that label. Oh, so. not at all. No. Yeah, I just, I just, <laughs> I just, I just thought I'd check with you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. More holistic, the better. Yeah. Now we've got the, the the live chat going on on YouTube, so uh, people uh, might have some some questions through throughout our chat. So sure. we'll, no we'll we'll get to those. It's it's quite lively just because this is on a brand new uh, dedicated show channel, but uh, everyone's uh, already tuning in. Though uh, we are uh, going to clash in a moment with uh, uh, Dear Bell Trans. Uh, Wednesday live stream with uh, Dougal, Dougal Cameron, so a bit of friendly competition. Everyone, stay here. Don't go and watch. Go. Don't go and watch Dia and Dougal. <laughs> uh, no comment. Oh <laughs> uh, well, you're here, so I know that. Well, we've got one dedicated viewer. <laughs> We're off to a flying start. Hmm. So yeah, let's. Let's go over the whole uh, history of this uh, abortion decriminalization plus because they tried to uh, put forward a, a bill in the, the 2015 to 2019 uh, parliament. Uh, that didn't get up, but they got 150 meter exclusion zones uh, off outside abortion clinics. So they got, uh, they got some sort of restriction on pro-life speech. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, uh, New South Wales, it's the, the last state which has uh, abortion in the Crimes Act, even though a Supreme Court decision legalised it in 1971 because it's, it's in the law as a crime, not a, a health issue that, that's got to be uh, dealt with, with the mm. uh, pro-abortion pro lobby and the, I, I shouldn't stereotype all feminists, but I, I'd call them the modern feminists are all pro-abortion. Yes. Well, that's the thing. It's not actually criminal. Anyone that's dealt into it, it's just in. It just happens to, that the legislation has been filed under uh, a criminal act. It, it's actually you're not a criminal. It, it's not criminal to do that. Uh, abortion. It's just there's certain rules you have to follow. Well, the only prosecutions have been uh, there was one uh, because a woman had illegally acquired uh, IU four eighty six the uh, the abortion drug, which well it's. It's told that you just take the pill and you bleed out and then it's done. But if if you look into what that that pill actually does, it's not like a headache tablet. Like it's it's, it's really painful and um, you no know, women like they they do see the the fetus when it comes out. Mm. And then there was one, I recall, there was one dodgy practitioner of abortion and that led to a prosecution. Mm. Mm. Shocking stuff. Mm. But uh, it's not simply moving uh, abortion out of the Crimes Act and keeping the status quo. It is legalizing abortion up until birth. Well, 
two doctors have to sign off on it, but apparently it's not going to be two doctors, it's two health practitioners. And as long as they say, yep, I uh, killed the, the newly born uh, baby, then it's, it's perfectly legal. Yeah, and uh, I think all of that is, it doesn't matter if it's two doctors or not. Two doctors, they do not dictate law. It, the whole thing's got to go. Now, Gladys Berejiklian, she, she sprung this on a, a coalition party room uh, because uh, Alex Greenwich, he had the bill, the independent member of Sydney had the bill ready to go. It was going to go to a vote immediately. And then there was a, a revolt in the party room where pro-life MP said, hang on, you can't just do this without any consultation. There's been no inquiry, uh, no submissions allowed, no, no nothing. It's just, yep, we're going to vote on this. Bang, bang, bang. It's ridiculous. I mean, the first major item on her agenda is this. That's disgusting. I mean, that's that's what Tony Abbott said um, when when he was at the march uh, on Sunday with uh, allegedly ten thousand people. Um, that's the major thing you want to tackle. <laughs> Why'd you say allegedly ten thousand people? Well, uh, maybe allegedly is not the right word. Reportedly, ten thousand people. I guess. Mm. Because allegedly um, no. implies that <laughs> there, there's some sort of legal dispute over whether there was 10,000 people there. Yeah, no, it, it definitely reportedly. I do know that they're actually, um, they've got, they, they, they put a survey out on the day. They said, um, go to this website. Um, the, it just said to, said to the people at the march, go to this website, say how many kids you, you've brought and blah, blah, blah. And that'll give us something solid and maybe 10 10 or give or take and um that'll give us a rough idea how many people were there but there was this amazing scene where everyone put their signs down they told everyone put your signs down and they did a 360 view of the march and i, I shared the, the post on facebook it's phenomenal how many people were there well that's because of pro-life advocates are the civilized people and so if the <laughs> organizer says okay can you follow this direction and they'll comply because they want it to be a successful peaceful rally yeah yeah well, absolutely yeah uh, we've got our uh, annual victorian march for the babies uh, october 12th that's always on the anniversary of the original abortion law reform act which has been the 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 standard for abortion decriminalization bills nationwide and it's also uh, before new zealand's parliament which is up until birth and so uh, it's been held uh, every year uh, since 2009 mm -hmm. march for the babies led by uh, a fearless uh, pro-life uh, liberal mlc uh, Bernie Finn. Uh, I trust everyone this year at the, the Victorian one, uh, it's held uh, outside uh, Melbourne's Parliament House, will be quite energised about what they've seen in, in New South Wales because it's been incredible. Me too. I mean, it wasn't, it was only last week we saw 20,000 people marching in Ireland and that's inspired a lot of people. Um, this We are the pro-life generation. I th people will look upon what we do, well, many people in our generation have done to babies, like we look back on slavery. It's just wrong. We want to be on the right side of history. Yes, and I'd be, as a pro-life advocate myself, I've been quite uh, demoralized uh, over the past few years just because each state was dropping like flies passing these radical abortion bills without much scrutiny. The latest was Queensland with uh, Comrade Palaszczuk and Comrade uh, Trad uh, pushing it through the uh, the, uh, the parliament, um, because that's that's who's running the state at the moment, a pair of communists. And of course, mm. there was uh, Ireland's uh, recent uh, referendum. They had a pro-life constitution and they voted two to one to strip that. And you know, uh, if Ireland falls on, on that value, then it's, it's, it's really, you know, it gets you quite down. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what even makes it worse and, and rad, um, rubs salt in the wound is the fact that in that particular island campaign, we know for a fact that Facebook um, actually restricted the pro-life ads in that whole campaign. And it's very disconcerting for anyone that's running a um, campaign contrary to people in California. Um, and it's ridiculous to see that sort of stuff happening. 
Well, Facebook argues that oh, you can't show an act what actually takes place in an abortion procedure because that's uh, bloody and gory. Well, doesn't that prove the point? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And I mean, like to to give them credit where credit's due, so be it. But in this particular situation, it wasn't. They did a blanket ban on abortion advertising. It was. It's. It, we saw a similar thing with. Um, Tulsi Gabbard in the in the presidential debates, where her her her, her name just disappeared off Twitter for no reason. It, it wasn't the fact, and they try to hide behind whatever reason, but there there's an agenda behind it. Ah oh, yes, uh, I was just referring to f what Facebook's been doing for a number of years with censoring uh, pro life activism under the. Uh, blood and gore community standards and and that's why a lot of young people now uh gen uh, gen z are, are pro-life because they can actually search for themselves i mean uh facebook google they're they're trying to prevent people like you finding out the the truth but this is uh this is the great thing about the digital age uh people they're able to be red pilled about what an abortion actually is it's not just a medical procedure uh, that you know, it's, it's like getting your appendix out uh, because this is the thing that uh, the, the pro-abortion lobby they managed to basically keep the keep what goes on in the abortion clinic super secret and so the woman goes in door shut that, uh, that's it and so everyone just believes the the baby boomers gen x gen y that oh it's just healthcare that goes on in there yeah, absolutely, and I mean that's it's it's fascinating because it's become the counterculture to fight against this. It, most people are, are cool with it. Why, you know, they say, why should you be a pro? Um, why shouldn't you be pro-choice? And well, it's 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 become the counterculture to say, I don't think you should be. I think the baby has a right to life too. You don't cancel out the baby. Yeah, definitely. Now. You were campaigning during the, the March New South Wales uh, state election. Uh, now, obviously, that was a hotly contested election. Gladys Berejiklian, uh, uh, she, she was in for a fight to retain majority. Most people thought it would be in a hung parliament. It was just a question of whether it was going to be liberal or coalition minority government or Labor minority uh, government. Uh, but uh, Michael Daly imploded in the final week with his... Uh, Oh, ba basically, his great replacement speech, that's what I call it, about uh, Asian <laughs> migrants. And, yeah, and yeah. then his uh, brain fart during the final Peepers Forum when he didn't know his costings for his TAFE. And so that was mm. the, the end of him. But did, did Gladys Berejiklian at all, did she mention abortion at all? No. Okay. Not a word. Not a word. And I think that is why people feel betrayed. And this is just six months after the election. So it's it's pretty soon and there's another three and a half years until an election so obviously and it's not just Gladys Berejiklian who facilitated this it was also Health Minister uh, Brad Hazard so basically intro introduce it pass it quickly six months after the election hope everyone forgets in three and a half years time when the next election comes through yeah and they're hoping that we forget we won't forget no this is this is the thing about people today who consume the news and an activist we we don't forget uh like for example we we haven't forgotten that uh, jeffrey epstein's suicide is very suspicious i mean they may not be talking about it on the news anymore but we haven't forgotten we haven't forgotten about christine blazy ford and her false claims so that yes. when a new one comes up like this week with the brett kavanaugh the now justice kavanaugh that it's completely phony Yes, I covered yeah, that done. in my uh, rundown uh, tonight. You've got your uh, event with uh, Bettina Arndt at uh, UNSW. Yes, I'm very excited for that. Mm. And uh, there, there's already a, a counter counter protest because uh, she, uh, Bettina Arndt, uh, she dares to say that some women uh, make up a sexual assault claims. Yes, absolutely, and I, I and I dare be a person that's anti-choice that, those are their words against me they um they started this event on facebook anyone can find it i think it's called protest patina Art. it's on tomorrow i encourage them not to hold it tomorrow because of the rain i want there to be as many protesters against us as possible so i said maybe do friday maybe do monday because it's less rain um <laughs> but they um 
they essentially just want to, they didn't want to protest on the day that we're going to be speaking, which is next Tuesday at the Red Centre Theatre at 6 p.m. because we um, we used that against them in the past. We got, you know, students disciplined, God forbid, um, for being disruptive to the talk. And so they, they've learnt for once, which is phenomenal, and they've actually decided to do it a, couple, a few days earlier, so tomorrow. Um, so we've got a few people going out there, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I hope nothing violent goes down, obviously, but we'll see what their arguments are of why Bettina shouldn't speak, so a feminist that has been fighting for 40 years for those women's sexual liberty, and why I shouldn't speak, someone who has barely made their mark on the world at all, because they've only been around for 22 years. <laughs> Well, when the left, they engage in political violence and intimidation and roadblocking stuff, to their mind, that's that's free speech. But when you or Bettina aren't speak, that's that's hate speech. That's that's inside violence. Exactly. And it's it's phenomenal. They have the goal to say that because I fight for their right to speak against often people on the right to my own detriment. Everyone should be heard. And you're a, a social, cons uh, a young conservative, uh, so yeah. I, I'm not sure what your views are on like sex and, but obviously by hosting Bettina Arndt, you take the view that if, if two uh, couples, oh, two heterosexual people want to engage in sexual intercourse, that's that's their choice, and there should be no, no like feminist police force. Yeah, obviously. I mean, uh, on the far left and the far right, there's obviously um, pushes to moderate sexual interactions between, between people. I think it's a bad idea. I think that um, I'd take the more libert libertarian stance on this. We should, the government shouldn't be involved in this at all. It should be between people and people should be getting their values from whatever they want, as long as it doesn't affect me. Yes, that is that is very libertarian of you. Mm. But of course, uh, that that type of uh, like, uh, I guess a sexual choice it's it's still considered enabling rape these days. It shows who the the <laughs> new like prohibitionists and wowsers have been. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it was it's been funny because I've I've seen a lot of people go through that revelation on the left as well, where they're just like, hang on, why are we the ones banning video games? That used to be the right wingers. And this is happening with a whole bunch of issues. Yeah, I saw there was a there was a news article that popped up on my Facebook feed today. It was a protest outside the the uh, like a new, uh, it, it, it was a new stage production of the the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and mm. I, I I wasn't sure for a moment who were the protesters. Were it turned out to be just some uh, like old like religious people but for a moment i wondered whether it was like modern feminists who said because i'm not sure if you've seen that uh uh but uh, uh, but the uh frank ferner he um well there, there's there's a few scenes there where he sexually forces himself on uh, brad and janet yeah well there's that and i mean another another example is you know how a lot of conservatives particularly christians because they've just been known historically in australia to be conservatives um, culturally conservative, they've often said, dress modestly, just like what the Muslims say, you know, and that, we understand where that comes from. And now what do we see happening? We see the left saying that women in the, in the fighting rings, the, I forgot the name of the, the sort of woman that are very dressed, very minimally, you know, to sell, to sell tickets, essentially, those women should not have a job anymore because it, it sort of presents an unrealistic view of women and you know Victoria's Secret is, is sort of having some backlash because of this as well because you should be proud of your curves and um, you shouldn't be fashioned. I wrote an article published last Saturday about uh, the state of Victoria's war on heterosexuality because they've got rid of the grid girls, the uh, yeah, the, the good at, at the F1, they got rid of the the ring girls that the the boxing, and now Daniel Andrews wants to get rid of the the Octon girls at the the, the UFC uh, because or they, yeah they uh, diminish uh, women and I made the double standard that you know this is apparently bad but you know at the the LGBT pride parades you know they're they're allowed to not wear much and like ha like do sexually suggestive poses but that's uh, liberation celebration of sexuality 
it's phenomenal. And it's just as Tim um, Tim Poole says, rules for thee, but not for me. It, mm. The double stand, standard is palpable. And I think it's just uh, something they need to be called out on because it can be, you know, double standards are some of the best ways to hit a point home. Because the way that I put it is that you're basically saying that it's wrong for heterosexual men to feel attraction to beautiful women, and that's wrong for, for, for women to want to be attractive for, for men. That, that's basically what it's, what it's communicating, and that it's going to lead to a bad society. Exactly. It, it's great that men and women are attracted to whatever. It, it, the attraction is great. That's what... That's why the human race is around to today. It's biological. Um, if we didn't have that, there's, some, there's something technically wrong with you. <laughs> yes, this is... We're, we're the liberationists these days. <laughs> exactly. And that's the funny thing. Tina Wright is, is one of the biggest advocates for this sort of stuff. And these young women, I'm, I'm not going to assume, but who will enjoy that at some point, most likely in their life, because that's just the way statistics are going socially. Completely ungrateful for someone who's dedicated decades of her life to this. It's amazing. But although we uh, respect uh, sexual choice, we also, to segue it back to the, the topic at hand, we also believe in sexual responsibility. And like, mm. obviously, I'm not sure what your views are as a Christian on contraception, but I have no uh, problem uh, with it except the the, uh, the the morning after pill because that's an abort fact. But you should uh, have sexual relations responsibly, and that includes uh, not uh, obviously not uh, having an unplanned pregnancy and not catching a sexually transmitted uh, infection. And it's it's quite like this like. That to if you if you do like have like there is uh, this unplanned pregnancy that uh, the solution to it is to to kill the child that's that's basically mm. I mean and you know I'm using that word uh, solution and and mm. killing purposely mm. yeah no I absolutely believe that life begins at conception and with that one principle I can I can extrapolate all the other facts being that well. Because contraception is fine as long as it's all before conception, mm. um, and and that uh, and and conception is 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 anything after that really shouldn't happen, and that it should you know you shouldn't be killing any kids, especially even even rape victims for example. I don't I don't err on the side of killing uh, babies that have been born from rape or killing babies that have been caught, born deformed or whatever, because it's very hard to argue with those very babies that have survived. Yeah. And they're testifying in front of Congress. It's like you, you want to say to that person, "You should be dead because you, your your father raped your mother." It's like yeah. it's a little bit tough now. That that's a grown up. <laughs> and, I don't. I, it's hard, there's not a lot of legs to stand on. And why should you punish the child with a death sentence because of the the sins of the father? That's that's how you should look at it. Exactly, and, and that's like, reparations talk. No, we're not. We're going to get it. That's the same argument. It, mm. It's it doesn't make sense. And I know that a lot of uh, female rape victims who've had abortions have basically said it was like being raped a second time because, as we've described, it's an invasive procedure, abortion, and like it's it doesn't just make it make it go away. It doesn't, and it's um as this as many of these amendments in the bill have. Uh, one of the one of them is, is that women should be able to be recommended by the, the doctors should be obliged to recommend that women see a counselor and provide that and that that be provided to them because it is an incredibly difficult situation that it puts a woman in they're often suicidal after killing the baby so and there's, uh, there's something seriously wrong with you if you have like 16 abortions like one of the girls we talked to when we were protesting Gladys Berejiklian and she was like you know, happy about the fact that she owned it on her sleeve. She was so happy that she'd had that many. She did was she, like, oh, that was my favorite abortion. Like, what, did what? she have tattoos that, like, for her abortions? <laughs> yeah, we must know the same. <laughs> no, no, she didn't have tattoos, but she just wore it on, well, figuratively speaking, she wore her heart on her sleeve on this issue, and she was proud of the fact that she'd had 16 abortions. 
And I, I just, I, I don't hate her. I just feel so sorry for her that how much she has fallen to see that. If she's a Christian, she will regret that in heaven. She will see what she's done. But if not, oh my gosh, <laughs> good luck. Well, it sounds like that what I think is that she was probably attempting to troll you, saying, oh, look, I had this many abortions. Ha ha ha. Look how no, triggered no. you're going to be by that. No, because... no, no, no. I, 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 don't, um, I don't care at the end of the day with regards to... Um, I don't get emotionally triggered like that. Uh, if anything, I just feel for the baby and feel for her as a person. But um, we actually, it was someone else that heard her talking to her friend saying, oh, I've had 16 abortions or whatever. And there was no one else around. Um, that, that's how we found out. And it was just like, oh, I feel so sorry for you. I mean, 16 abortions, that would do, like, if you wanted to actually have, like, a child for real, like, your chances of actually, like, naturally conceiving after that are quite diminished. Uh, that's because... right. Because as as we've said, it's an invasive procedure that it it's and it damages uh, women's further reproduction. Yeah, and and it's it's phenomenal that um, they want to go through with it, and and they're often lied into doing it. Like this won't affect you or whatever. And you know we've seen these investigations done in um, Planned Parenthood in the U.S. Mm. These women are lied to about what what the procedures um, after effects will be, and it's disgusting. Because it seems that the only voices that are allowed in the counselling uh, sphere is the the ones who whisper in these women's ear, abort, 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 abort. Yeah, it's it's, it's disgusting. And that's why they ban the sidewalk counsellors who have saved a lot of women from going through an abortion. That can't happen anymore. I remember. You, it, you're, you're too young to remember this, but when Tony Abbott was federal health minister, he, oh, it was, there was such outrage that he wanted to uh, fund uh, pregnancy counselling, which would try and encourage uh, women to, to keep their pregnancy. Wow, I didn't know that. That's fascinating. Mm. I, I, I can see why they'd be protesting. Actually, no, I can't see why. It's a complete, it's a complete, like, we we just are arguing for the sake of arguing. That's what it sounds like. It's like it's like what's happened today with um, Albanese arguing against investigation into the uh, the family uh, court system. <laughs> yes, because arguing. because that's been an issue this week. Uh, Pauline Hansen's been able to achieve a review of the the family uh, court system with uh, she's deputy mm. chair and uh, Kevin Andrews, liberal backbencher. He's going to be chair and that's another thing Bettina Arndt has been campaigning for and yeah that's that's another thing the feminists are outraged about because you know believe all women yeah exactly and uh, Bettina Arndt's been praising Pauline Hanson which she never does um, but this is something they've both been fighting for for a very long time I mean the amount of times Pauline Hanson's promised this is amazing I can it makes sense why she's co-chairing it yes and Last time I checked, Pauline Hanson's a woman. <laughs> yeah. Mm. What, what, what did they want? They, they want someone, a dude from Labour Party to be chairing it? No. Well, that, well, that's the thing. She doesn't count as a, a, a women's advocate. Yes, and it's grossly, it's grossly unfair, I think. Uh, but uh, well, Pauline Hanson, she she does what the the feminists uh, dare not uh, do, which is uh, oppose the the Islamization of Australia, which is quite bad for women. Some might call her a true feminist. <laughs> yes, I mean, she certainly does a better job than. Have you seen Sinead O'Connor lately? Mm -hmm. Yes, her uh, rainbow hijab. Oh, uh, God, it just. Go, go, do that. Do, go to Saudi Arabia and do that. Let's see how long you last. You last. You might last longer than me uh, preaching in Christianity in, in a town square on a box. <laughs> We're getting into the XYZ live habit here. I'm going on these tangents, but I'm enjoying it, aren't you? <laughs> Savvy, you not. And I think the people in the chat are. There hasn't been a mass exodus to uh, Dear Beltran live. She did post in the, uh, the comments uh, saying rude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she won't talk to me for a week now. <laughs> I don't. I don't like to pay attention to the comments. Often, I find that 
the best the best podcasts are the ones that we don't pay attention. But if there's legitimate questions, of course we'll listen to them. But yeah, uh, live audiences is much. is half the fun I find because yeah, yeah it's, well, especially with the uncuckables because basically the 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 live audience they they create half the discussion themselves just with they they get up to stuff during the show. Oh, the Uncomfortables is a beast of its own. That's 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 a special little talk. I I think more about like the success of Joe Rogan being that he just doesn't give an f. He just has his he just has his podcast. He, he's talking with the person he's talking with, and they just love it. I think people they're hungry for uh, genuine dialogue like that. I I disagree. I enjoy the XYZ live because I listen to it on replay where they stop for the super chats and what's going on in the live chat. It's it's good to notice that interaction and that immediate feedback. Yeah, absolutely. What 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 are the comments saying? Are there any questions for us so far? Uh, never rest. Oh, he just said he was going to go over to Dia, but it was just he was just trolling me. <laughs> <Bastard>. <laughs> Dave is always late. Yes, Dave is late. Uh, Dave Lee tonight is late. He was supposed to be on <laughs> at seven, but he's been delayed uh, until nine. So he's the real reason we're competing with Dia tonight. Oh, okay. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah. All right. Again, we've, we've segued again. So back to the topic at hand. So as as we've both established, this was sprung on uh, the people of New South Wales, the pro-life MPs, and it caught the, the the pro-life lobby completely off guard. And but you've been able to mobilise with with two successful pro-life events: the the ten thousand uh, one last last Sunday with with Tony Abbott and and Barnaby Joyce. Uh, Barnaby wow. Joyce, it seems he's. Uh, his advocacy is he's also fighting his own New South Wales colleagues on this because it's long joked that the New South Wales State National Party is basically the Greens now because they're just so far left on on social issues and uh, why they're why they're busy pursuing that uh, New South Wales is about to run out of water. Yeah, it's um, if only they <laughs> if only they invested the energy that they are in this issue. And other issues. Oh my gosh, we'd be flourishing, I think. Yes, <laughs> that's why people of uh, rural New South Wales are voting for the F F uh, Shooters, Fishers, and Farmers Party and other independents. They won three seats at the the, the state elections. So uh, exactly, uh, the results uh, speak for themselves. And Barnaby Joyce, obviously, people drag his. Uh, his personal life uh, into this, obviously his marriage breakup and unplanned pregnancy with with Vicky Campion. I'm not sure if you watched the the Sunday night uh, exclusive, which they were paid for, and Vicky Campion. She did go into detail where she was like so close to taking the AU486 pill to abort now uh, Sebastian, and which is that, that's, that's it was it was pretty deep stuff that and. Uh, like people like say, well, look, you know, your partner, she nearly aborted your child, but yes, but look, in the end, they came to the, the, the decision that they wanted to have the, the child, and now they've just had their, their second child. I mean, yes, Barnaby Joyce is on his, his second family, it stretched his, his wage uh, very thin, but that is the lesson, I, 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 the modern, I think, lesson that we should take. It doesn't matter how pregnancy occurred there should be no judgment I, it, like back in the old days it was like horrible that women were shamed for having an unplanned pregnancy out of out of wedlock and there are all these things where the mother would pretend to be pregnant and that the the uh, uh, the child would be would be theirs to cover up that the daughter had had a unplanned pregnancy but we're thankfully those days are uh, behind us and so Barnaby Joyce yes he is a morally flawed person uh, but he he didn't commit what is one of the the worst uh, acts in our society which is kill his child yeah absolutely and i mean that's the thing we, we have many you know we, we're not our leaders they're not meant to be the moral savers of the of the universe they're meant to people who to be people who get a good policy done right and policy that reflects the population and i think when barnaby joyce stepped in against his nationals um, colleagues, I guess you could say, 
it was clearly saying that you guys are not representing the people you're representing. That's why I'm the one in front of the crowd and not you, because there was an, a, a there was a um, pro-choice uh, rally a few days previously, a few hundred, no more than 500 people were there, mm. and and that that's generous. I reckon there was about 150 maybe there, and the the chance they were giving, the chance. Oh uh, yes, yes, ugly. I've got. I'm just gonna play uh, the mm -hmm. the chance at the the pro-abortion rally i call it mm. pro-abortion not pro-choice because they are at the end of the day uh pro-abortion mm. now i want people to judge for themselves what they they think that they are hearing uh, here Now, apparently it was fake news that they said, put the fetus in the bin. They were saying, put the bill in the bin. But I've listened to it over and over again. And uh, how does fetus sound like bill? It, well, forget about if it sounds like that. It wouldn't make any sense. Why would you put the bill that guarantees abortion in the bin? Yes. <laughs> We otherwise we'd be chanting that with you. That's what we were chanting. We said, Gladys, you're going in the bin, or else the bill has to go in the bin. It's one or the other. I mean, you can cry fake news, and I know that the the Guardian has said that ah, oh, this uh, reporting of uh, this chant, it's it's fake news. Are they saying that the the camera and the microphone uh, misheard them? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Who knows. I, I just, I just think that they are, um, they need to own it. They need to own what they're, what they're protesting. If they truly believe that the baby should be put in the bin, own it and, and explain to us why. Don't, don't play these games. People don't, you know, Australians pride themselves in their ability to see through bulldust, as John Anderson says. So why are you trying to, you know, make it seem like we're stupid? We're not stupid. We heard what you said. So defend your idea. Show some at, guts. At uh, the Victorian March for the Babies, the the, the socialist alternative, uh, other uh, far left activist groups like the Reason Party, they've counter protested uh, many times throughout uh, uh, th throughout the holding of this event. But it was interesting the one time that uh, they didn't uh, counter. Uh, protest the 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 socialists uh, was in 2015 uh, because uh, you'll never guess uh, what was happening on the same day. What was happening? Uh, uh, the UPF uh, were holding a uh, anti mosque rally in Bendigo, so they all went <laughs> to Bendigo and said uh, so they couldn't be at two places at once, which I guess shows you know professional protesters they they they're, they're far and few between. <laughs> Jeez, that's funny. Mm. So we actually had a, a great time in 2015 because they they just all racked off and um, yeah, we we got to have a peaceful march. Well, that's what we're noticing, and I mean, this protest that's being happening with Bettina Art, they are the same protesters. We know they're the same protesters because we have people in their ranks who have told us they're the same protesters that have gone from uni to uni to uni. There, there are people um, that were protesting in, at SUNY University and on camera, we have them. And they are the ones who have organized this march in the, this, this protest at, at New South Wales University. What are you doing there? They, they are a vocal, very well organized vocal minority. When I say minority, I mean micro minority, and they're bullying the elephant around the room. But I've, I'm still amazed that they managed to afford all these nice signs and banners and everything like that. They have like some funding that comes from somewhere. This is the problem with conservatives, because people on the left like them. I hate to generalize about a lot of these students. There's no shame in taking Centrelink uh, money if you need it. I totally get that, especially for a student. It's a, it's a tough life. But the problem comes when conservatives don't fund the young people who are working, who are busy, where it's not in their best interest time-wise, financially-wise, to be doing any of this. Like you tell me, Tim, when you first started this, 
how hard was it on you? You 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 outlaid a lot more cash than you would have um, gotten in. That's for sure. I'm not asking you to disclose what you what you get now, but the fact of the matter is, there are many young Tim Wilms out there, men and women, who would love to contribute to the conservative movement, like Samra, like Dia. But the problem is, there's no support. Now, this is the funny thing. What we're seeing in America, in the UK, in Australia, is we're just waking up the sleeping giant, Prager University, Turning Point USA. Once these organizations are set up, all of a sudden, the big conservative money is like, okay, that's where we directed Charlie Kirk. Amazing stuff. Um, Bridget Gabriel, amazing stuff. It, we're just we're just slow to the mark, but once we get there, we're deadly. Yes, it ain't cheap uh, political activism and uh, running alternative media. That's for sure. It takes takes dedication and and perseverance. Absolutely, and it's it's often off your own back and out of your own pocket. Now let's uh, fast forward to well this week uh, where there was the. Pardon the pun, aborted uh, spill motion uh, against uh, Gladys Berejiklian. I, I, I had I had to make the the joke that it was aborted spill motion, not carried to full term because it would have been deformed. Like obviously I'm pro life, <laughs> but I'm allowed to just make jokes. So <laughs> I did make those jokes on Facebook because it was funny. Obviously I'm not disparaging. Uh, pro, pro, uh, pro-life activists. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, don't lose your sense of humor. I mean, just because mm. it's a serious topic. Yeah, so the, the movers of the, the spill motion were, were Tanya Davey. She's probably the, the most fiercely uh, pro-life uh, woman in the parliament. Mm. And she used to be the minister for women. And apparently she couldn't be the, the minister for women because she was pro-life. And well, after, the, <laughs> after the 2019 election, she was uh, dumped from that uh, role. Hmm, it uh, <laughs> I, I, makes all sense now, doesn't it? It does. Mm. And it's disgusting. And uh, Lou Amato and Matthew Mason Cox, they were the three movers of the spill motion. Now, uh, Tanya Davies and Kevin Conley, they'd previously uh, threatened to defect uh, to the, the cross bench. Uh, uh, their, their demands were that uh, four key amendments uh, be made to the, the abortion bill to prevent uh, late term abortions, to ban uh, sex uh, selective abortions. There are two quite fiercely pro-life uh, cabinet ministers. Uh, Damien Chuthope, who's the finance minister, he used to uh, work for the Australian Families Association, and uh, Treasurer Dominic Perrottet, who's seen as Gladys's successor. He was quite open with his opposition to the bill, but the whole cabinet rallied around Gladys saying, this is not a spill, this is a joke, she's our best asset, she won us the election, she'll be leader for as long as uh, she wants to. John Barillaro, the, the Nationals leader, Deputy Premier said, our coalition agreement is with Gladys and if she's removed, then you know, the, the, the coalition agreement is, is torn up as well. So be it. So be it. I mean, these MPs, they can do whatever they want. I don't. I think they're going to have to make some very big decisions in the coming months on whether they stand on their own two feet. They may be beyond the point where there's no return right now. They might have to go to the, the, after the stunts they've pulled. I think they're great stunts, but after the stunts they've pulled in everyone's eyes, there may be no going back. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter if this bill is dropped or not. It doesn't matter if all the amendments are done. It doesn't matter any situation here. As long as Gladys stays in, there is no coming back for her in terms of her. Um, the manner that she's dealt with this, the way you started this pod, this um, this video, she, there was no mention of abortion. For all we knew, we knew her as an Armenian, uh, daughter of immigrants, a woman, a woman that was pro-life. That's all we knew, and she's completely stabbed us in the back. And this is only going to get worse for her. And we know pe the people behind this pro-life movement, they're the same people that almost unseated uh, almost the Labour leader, Anthony Albanese. No, not Anthony Albanese, um, the ex-treasurer, what's his name? Chris Bowen. Chris Bowen. Chris Bowen didn't want to have a discussion on religious freedom. The religious freedom people in his area rallied. They held many 
rallies and had a whole bunch of people there. Then he had an eight point shift against him. What happened after the election? He's like, oh, oh let's have a meeting. Let's do this and that. We, we, oh, when, the, when the bill comes out, we can read it together. What's that about? That just shows you that we do have the power of the majority when they know all the facts and when they know that you've stabbed us in the back. And she has already stabbed us in the back. It only gets worse for you from her. If this bill passes, she will not get in again. Mark my words. She will not get in again. And the electoral demographic of, of Sydney is rapidly shifting and becoming volatile. There was, I think it was published in the Australian, which showed, because normally it's Western Sydney, solidly Labor, Eastern Sydney, which is solidly Liberal, but in state and federal election, in Eastern Sydney, there's been swings to Labor and other left-wing parties. In Western Sydney, there's been swings to the the, the Liberal Party. So the, 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 the Sydney electorate, it's it's going to be interesting to watch in future elections and obviously issues uh, such as this and uh, remember the the same-sex marriage postal survey that uh, New South Wales had the lowest uh, yes uh, vote out of any state in the in the sure. country most no sure. electorates they were all in Western Sydney uh, all held mm. by Labour I think, I, think I think 13 out of the 17 were in Western Sydney uh, there was only uh, Mitchell which was held by Alex Hawke uh, which voted no which was Liberal that's because it's where a lot of uh, religious communities live and Benelog which is held by John Alexander because of the heavy Asian population there so and also New South Wales it's also the most religious state not the most Christian state but the most religious state in Australia so it, sh it, it, it shouldn't be surprising logically that there'd be the most opposition there to killing babies and having this uh, radical abortion law exactly and the fact of the matter is immigrants you know attract immigrants to each other we're, we're tribal people and Lebanese people get attracted to Lebanese people, and that, that's that's where you see these little enclaves in Maryland and Granville. The same thing goes for Indians. The same thing goes for Muslims. We all get along. We all work together. Now, this is the thing. The moment that you tell us that men and women should be married together, you already have discovered your Achilles heel. What are you going to do about the Muslims? What are you going to do about the, the Christians who share the same view, the Middle Eastern Christians? The Maronites, the Coptics, the the Orthodox. You, you, Gladys has, Gladys. First of all, she's done a phenomenal job at uniting all of the Christian denominations. Scott Morrison, on the religious freedom issue, has done an even a ama more amazing job, where he's united all the religions together, and they all share the same view on the religious bill in pushing affirmative rights. It's phenomenal watching what's happening and the backlash on these people will be phenomenal in, in the election for the state election, three and a half years, and in the federal election, we will see it. Even though Gladys Berejiklian, she didn't mention abortion throughout the campaign, she was well known in from political observers that she was from the, the moderate or, or probably far, you should say far left of the, the party. I mean, she... She, she voted for the progressive stance on most social issues and well she is a, a career woman she's never been married or or had uh children and so you know there's sort of that sort of modern like female image about her so she she wasn't exactly sort of the like i i, I would be like i was i'd be surprised if what you said is true that conservatives trusted her it's not that look, we had a choice at the election, just like with the federal election and the choice from the choices we had, we did not trust a guy that had come out and made all those comments, a guy that had a scathing history. And, you know, New South Wales is pretty much the financial hub of Australia. This, we've got all the TNCs here. We've got um, enormous focus in this place with all the immigration we're receiving, where we added another seat federally to this place, along with Melbourne. And this is this is the problem. Um, Gladys, the, 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 the good thing is the Liberal Party have a very good history in managing the economy, managing transport, managing a whole bunch of 
um, infrastructure. They're better than labor. That's not a competition. Now, this is the problem. We do still live in a two party situation, but that will change in time if they don't make changes needed to be comp to be competent to strive. And obviously Gladys survived the, the spill. There's now talk about whether she's mostly wounded. You, you agree that as she is yeah. and yeah, she has handled this appallingly, just basically doing a secret deal with her political enemies. That's like, let's sum it up. But I don't think that this is a sackable offense, especially six months after the election. I mean, she, she did, uh, she was elected at the election. It was Gladys and the, the New South Wales team. That was, she, she was on all the ads. It was, you know, vote for Gladys. That, that was yeah. the, the slogan. And so, yes, to yeah, use it's, not, that, it's not sackable. Yeah. Like to, to use, to use the, uh, the pun, like she should be able to go full term. <laughs> and like and they are doing good things on economic management and infrastructure building everything not going into to debt the new south wales economy is the best uh in the country they haven't gone crazy like victoria and south australia when it comes to uh, energy it, uh, the main problem is well the nationals just letting the rivers run dry i mean they're the ones who are, <laughs> are messing up the state uh but and also these um the, the MPs that have threatened to defect Tanya Davies and uh, Kevin Conlay, they were still elected as Liberal MPs. I don't think that there would be a lot of people in their electorates who wouldn't have voted for them uh, if, like, only voted for them if they had the Liberal next to their name. They wouldn't vote for Tanya Davies, Independent, or uh, from, from somewhere else. And it is also worth uh, highlighting that none of the explicitly pro-life parties, Christian Democrats and the Australian Conservatives, won a legislative council seat. Uh, one, uh, one Nation and Shooters, Shooters and Farmers, they tend to lead pro-life, but it's it's not like social conservative values are not their, their centerpiece. It's sort of, it's, it's more sort of immigration and uh, freedom for just working class people. Yeah, no, I mostly agree with that. I mean, I don't think I don't think any person on the left or the right should be sacked based on one issue. Even if they're completely wrong on the issue, they shouldn't be sacked. They should be judged at the next election based on all the issues they've tried to tackle. Um, and that's why I say she won't last in three and a half years. No, the, the pushes to remove her as the leader of the Liberal Party in New South Wales, I think it's wrong in, in my opinion. I do think that um, that is a party, that is party politics that need to be, that, that's not my domain. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea to do it. As you said, she was elected for a whole a plethora of things. It, it's, it's like, it's exactly what the left are doing with um, the environment debate. Their, their whole voting rests upon whether their candidate believes in, in climate change or not. It's like, okay, well, what about the economy? What about you know, water. What about everything? Like, like energy. You need you need to take the whole um, manifesto in, into into account. Now, when it comes to um, Tanya Davies and um, a whole bunch of other of the MPs, the three MPs threatening to to defect to the uh, crossbench. Again, that's party politics. I mean, Corey Bernardi defected uh, to form his own party because he felt that. He, the party that he was elected to had changed. Um, now, I'm not sure um, how that should play out, but those are things that should be sorted out on a case-by-case case basis. And Gladys is right to say that she can't tell MPs how to vote. It's a conscience vote. Life and death issues have always been conscience votes uh, in the, the Liberal, Labor and, and National parties. So she can't, I mean, it's been called negotiating with terrorists. She can't, with these <laughs> uh, pro-life MPs, she can't bind the rest of her pro-abortion MPs to, to vote for them if they, they don't want to. This is a long uh, established uh, uh, parliamentary or party principle of all the major parties. Yes, I, I, I think that there should be as much transparency as possible because I, I think there shouldn't be a conscience vote. I, I think that I think there shouldn't be a conscience vote. I think everyone should be 
black and white so that every each one of the electorates can hold them accountable when the when the time comes around and then then the buck stops with the voters really yeah um, I, i'd agree with that uh, i'm just referring to like how things are at the moment but that would be ideal that you know uh when, when you go into a, a booth because voters don't know if they're ticking liberal they're getting a pro pro-life or pro-abortion MP or if they're taking Labour, they're getting a pro-abortion uh, or pro-life MP because there's a lot of Labour MPs who are pro-life. Exactly. And I mean, this, this is the job of um, the opposition advertising when they're saying why they're better than the other guys. Um, if there's a new Conservative um, force out there or One Nation when, when, when it's their turn and they're saying they're pro-life, they will be shouting it through off the rooftops that your, your current MP is voted, you know, not to be pro-life. Yeah, it's something that I, I definitely agree there needs to be more accountability. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of commentary that this is a damaged uh, brand liberal in, in New South Wales. The, the oppo Labor opposition leader, Jodie Mackay, s still seems to be invisible, but the... <laughs> La uh, New South Wales Labor, of course, has got their own problems by, uh, with accepting $100,000 uh, donation, illegal donations in Audi bags. And what was that, the, the, the Labor QC today, he said uh, the, the evidence that I cook about the illegal uh, donation from Chinese uh, businessman Hung Jangimo, um, that these were... Uh, what, what had been presented as evidence before ICAC were alternative uh, facts. That's what he said. <laughs> He's using a Trumpism. Just, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just think that people are so fed up. You know, the, ma the major parties have been having a rough few months, you know. I feel sorry for them in New South Wales. I, I think the people are fed up with this kind of crap, not being represented and... Um, just shady crap going on and vice versa i mean if you go back and you know both both parties have these problems and and that's the issue i think when this is what we're seeing around the world this is this is the sort of thing that makes brexit brexit and trump trump these are these are the events which tie them all together it's the fact that you've got a situation where the the elites of a country the elites of a party the elites in society in a country they act like they know what's best. They tell you and try to re-educate you as to what's best. And then they try to thwart it once you vote against it. And you see Brexit, three, three and a half years on, nothing's happened. You see Trump, two years of a Russia investigation. You see Brett Kavanaugh, they're still bringing up rape charges. They're saying impeach him. You've got democratic candidates saying impeach him. This is what we're seeing around the world. So when we see Gladys Berejiklian not being transparent, going into an election, not making, not even saying the word abortion at all as a policy position, and then stabbing us in the back and saying, we're going to ram this bill through, we're going to hope to, hope to do it in three days. No, 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 no bloody way. We're going to hold you up. We're going to drag this out. We're going to have a public discussion. And if you have tried to run this through, on us, we will make you pay at the next election. Doesn't matter if you get it through. We will be coming after you and you will not serve again. This is your greyhound. Yes, and that ended the, the premiership of, of Mike Baird, who was Gladys's predecessor. Well, I'm, I'm doubtful that you'll be able to, to kill the bill uh, as, as you were chanting on, on Sunday, but New South Wales, they've inspired, I think, the Australia-wide uh, pro-life uh, movement that if in just a, a few months you can get that groundswell of grassroots support, then it is possible to push back uh, against these uh, pro radical pro-abortion laws that have been passing uh, in Australia. And um, I, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to come down to Melbourne on October 12th if you can. I'm not sure what your schedule is like, but it'd be great if uh, you, could, you could come down as a, as a warrior from the north. October 12th, is it, for uh, yes. the, 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 the march? Who, who, who usually runs the march? Bernie Finn, our uh, liberal pro-life MLC. Well, who knows? I mean, yeah. it's a add weekend. On, yeah, add him on Facebook. He's, he's awesome. Bernie Finn. Yeah.
And good luck with uh, Bettina Arndt at uh, UNSW. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, anyone that's in Sydney that's listening, please um, be, try and get out there at the Red Centre Theatre. Um, we are expecting protests. We'll see if we get protests. But I won't disclose it on here, but just to taste it for you, the some of the stuff we're seeing at university campuses, they've, how they're forcing students um, and they're withholding students' marks if they don't complete sexual training, mandatory sexual consent training, it's phenomenal. And I can't reveal all the details on here, but you guys have to come along and see um, the presentation. Bettina's got arranged, the presentation I've got arranged. It's phenomenal what they're doing. And you're going to want to shout it from the rooftops once you hear what we've got. Uh, you've got us uh, aroused, to use a pun. Oh, sorry, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfectly appropriate for a woman like Bettina Rahm, Australia's first sex therapist. But <laughs> go, right. go check out our interview with um, Butterfield. Um, yeah, I, uh, that popped up on my feed, which is he's got a yes. million subs. So yeah, that's yes, awesome. Yes, it's got it, it's got a fascinating start to it, where he where she's just like, I've always been fascinated by erections. It's it's <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> it's a great interview. But, yeah, check it out. All right, take care, Joel, and uh, we'll, we'll chat again soon, maybe about this issue or, or something else that's happening up north. Well, hopefully about protests, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> Thank All you, right. it's a pleasure being on. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.